you really don't know. Especially the way that you feel, you, you have the feeling that, and you know that this is serious, this is bad. This is bad and am I gonna die? And when you realize that you didn't even have the time to say bye to your loved ones, it's sad, it's very sad. My name is Leo Begasso. I'm an RN. As a manager of blood draw area, we've seen about 400 to 500 patients a day. One of the things that I pass this philosophy along my the staff members, that every patient that comes through the doors, every patient is like patient number one for us. Unfortunately, um, or maybe fortunately, if you want to put it, I think, in this way, I experienced the COVID-19. April 3rd, I started developing the fever. I started feeling sick. Uh, fever never went away. It was really, uh, the fatigue was extreme fatigue in all of your body, body aches all over. It, it's painful, really, the whole experience. And my wife took the decision on April 5th to call 911. That was one of the saddest moments because based on the, on the pandemic that we have right now and all of the measures, um, when I left the house, I didn't even have a time to give a hug to my, my wife, give a kiss to my kids, nothing. And, and it's sad because when now, when my journey started in the hospital, uh, and I start realizing that perhaps I'll, I'm gonna die. My symptoms start getting worse. They try everything possible not to put me on the ventilator, but on the 10, Everything was showing that my chances of surviving were, were going down day by day. And the doctor explained to my wife, if we don't do anything, if we don't do anything in there, we, uh, your husband might gonna die on the bed with a cardiac arrest. Since he's not supplying oxygen enough by himself, the heart is working too much at this point, and the heart is enlarged. So the heart, he might gonna, develop a cardiac arrest and, and die on the bed in the next 48 hours probably. At that moment, it was just me, it was God, and it was death on the other side. And I gave all my faith into God, and I just pray and say, I'm on your hands, and whatever you have for me, you have to do it. And after that, I gave the okay and they proceed with the intubation, knowing that probably I won't wake up anymore. After showing signs of recovery while I was on the vent, on April 15, the doctors, they evaluate my case and they decide that they were going to put me out of the ventilator. I spent 18 days in the hospital. I spent four more days in the ICU. Uh, and then they, they sent me to the regular floor for four more days to continue monitoring me, and after that, I was discharged from the hospital on April 23rd. When I say at the beginning, uh, this is, in a way, it's fortunate. Uh, I was fortunate to go through this process because it really reassured why I like and I love to take care of people, why my mission in Moffitt needs to continue, why I want to come back and I want to continue giving the best of myself to my patients. I'm not here just to do a job. I'm here to help people. I'm here because they're suffering. I'm here because they're fighting for their lives every day. They're fighters. And I'm here to remove any hard block that comes across their journey. I'm here to help into this process. So today I'm I'm sure of what I'm doing and why I love to be a nurse and why I love to work over there in Moffitt.